Well, hello neighbors. I'm John, your whiskey neighbor. And today, um, happy Scotch Sunday. I just thought I should do a, a, a Scotch release for Sunday and wanted to do uh, something that I'm pretty sure every YouTuber out there has probably reviewed. Uh, but I'd like to give my thoughts on the Belvini Caribbean cask, 14 year old. Catch you after the break. Yeah, so, so thanks for coming back uh, after break and uh, you know checking out my thoughts on the Belvinian Caribbean cask. Um, I want to say this was one of the um, first or early, not first, but, but, a, but an early, hey I'd like to check out more finishings or I'd like to get into something a little more interesting than you know the 12-15 kind of releases that, that I, I was playing with at the time. And uh, Jamie Johnson, who is the Canadian brand ambassador for Belvini, I remember hearing her as before she was the brand ambassador, talking with uh, Mark on uh, the whiskey topic about uh, the Caribbean cask and how much they liked it. And, and so I remember thinking, all right, I'm gonna stretch, I'm gonna pick that up um, and see what I think. So a little bit about the spirit, uh, it is, um, Distilled in X bourbon, uh, distilled in, <laughs> it's uh, distilled, it's single malt, so it's barley, uh, and then they're aging it up, and they age it for most of its life, uh, and I don't know exactly, you should dig around on YouTube, but I'm gonna say somewhere around 12 years or something like that in X bourbon, and then they're gonna finish it in uh, Caribbean rum cask, cask that held uh, Caribbean rum. But what I understand it is that Belvini actually makes the rum, I don't know if you can buy it. I can't imagine that they just dump it, but that actually they work quite a bit on creating a, a, a rum that had the flavor profile they wanted, you know, aging that in the cask, kind of seasoning the casks, emptying, and then putting their um, scotch into their own casks with uh, that had their own rum. That's what I've heard and, and I, might have been from Jamie, and but it's I, I, I'm trying to think. It was a pretty, pretty reputable source. At any rate, this is uh, a 14-year maturation. Uh, it has been in ex bourbon and then matured in uh, Caribbean rum casks, and this one is bottled at 43%. You can see it's getting a little lower in the bottle. I'm going to comment on that later. So on the nose, if you're lucky enough to have this dram or uh, the scotch around, and pour yourself a dram. I find, uh, you know, this scotch is quite alive. It's got some nice fruits going on. We've got, uh, you know, and this is when tasting notes, as they are totally subjective, the fruits that I suggest are the fruits that come to my mind because they're what I've had, right? Uh, but they might not be your fruit. So for me here, this is, you know, kind of tropical fruits. Uh, but then there's also some orchard in there. Like I can get some pear. I can get apricot. That's my kind of... And then for tropical, I mean, um, maybe because the sugar, it's not, I don't mean it's, um, it's a fruit cup because that's terrible. But what I mean, it's not that fruity. But what I'm trying to say is there's a little bit of a, a sugary fruit that makes me think tropical. Uh, for me, it's not leathery enough or strong enough to be mango, but it's moving in that direction. Uh, and then... Yeah, but and then there's like a hint of pineapple, but it's not as tart or as bitey as that. So it's easier for me to pick out the fruits that I have more often, right? Pear and apricot I can get in here. Tropical, it's like, well, but there's something else there and, and a little bit sweeter in the nose. Yeah, uh, like a sugar. But not grainy, just a nice, like a, a, like a high, high sugary fruit, which is, I would say, a sweeter fruit, like something quite ripe from the tropics. I like the nose. I like the nose a lot. Um, in terms of, boy, I, I should get a, a white back, background, but you could see uh, clearly it still has some nice oils going on. The legs are coating the glass. Um, coloring, you know what? I don't know. I, I'm sorry to say, you know, 50, uh, for 15, 14 years. Um, 
And going through, you know, uh, uh, casking like that, I could be convinced this is natural color. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it says on it. I wish, I honestly wish we would just all agree not to color our whiskey. Um, at any rate, it's a very pleasing color for sure. All right, it's a quick taste. I'm always quite conscious of those tasting moments live. And I, and I really like to, to, to make this a conversation, like what do I taste today? Um, of course I've looked at my notes, of course I've had this before, but, but I kind of like to say, well what am I, in this moment, right now, what's it like? And in this moment, um, I actually found, uh, you know, this, the, the mouthfeel was nice and creamy, um, very enjoyable to drink, both to, to pull at the sugars at the front and coat down the side. Um, a little bit of spiciness comes up. Uh, not not wild, not crazy, not not runaway, um, but maybe a little bit of cinnamon in there, just a little bit. Um, the fruit to me in the palate actually gives away a little bit. I find it far more on the nose than in the in the palate. Um, I find the palate still quite nice, uh, gentle. Um, uh, you know, the alcohol is is well well matured, so it's not really uh, in your face. Um, it's not boozy that way at all. Um, now I can get some more characteristics from the, the wood. You know, the sweetness tends now to be a little bit more vanilla. I expected being in a rum cask to be crazy sugar. Like I thought molasses and, and, and coated crystal. Um, I don't get that. In fact, I find more a, a good malt character, you know, a good mouth feel. And, and the sweetness, certainly the nose was, was far more um, alive. Uh, then, then I was thinking when I first got this, I really thought, well, of course, rum cask, I'm going to get just that high, high, uh, um, sugar on the finish. Um, it's, it, it hangs around for a while, which is nice. That's where you, uh, I certainly taste oak. Thankfully it's not, it's not too bitter. Um, you know, sometimes that's where uh, some of that part of your whiskey comes out. I'm going to give it a little bit of water, um, you know, at 43%, uh, it's not because I'm worried about, um, you know, the overall alcohol effect, but um, sometimes adding a little bit of water, well, you should always do it when you're tasting a whiskey at some point in the bottle, and I, I certainly have done it earlier, uh, just to sort of, uh, to see what changes. And when you do, it's nice to give it a longer marrying time than I do here, but cognizant that most people just drop in. Yeah, you know, here, you know, some of that lively fruit kind of went away a little bit for me with water on the nose. I, uh, yeah, I, I, maybe I can get a little more citrus, a little more, a little more, yeah, maybe a little more citrus. Uh, but now I feel like I'm more left with, with, you know, the sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Actually, the fruit went away from me quite a bit with that amount of water. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting. Today, I don't recall writing this down. So, um, today, the addition of water really quieted the nose for me. Um, brought out a little citrus. Uh, but a lot of the fruits perished. Um, but the palate woke up. I'm getting honey and um, another layer of sugar. Now now I am getting a little more toffee caramel. Um, huh. Well, that's interesting. Hey, there you go. So um, my thoughts on the Belvini 14-year Caribbean cask are... Uh, this is a, a very nice um, beginning if you're looking to do a more complicated scotch or uh, like with more things going on or you know you like scotch and you're looking for a real crowd pleaser. I find the, the, the taste profile, the notes in this scotch reach many people even though it's not sherry so it doesn't really have the, the red uh, kind of dried leathery fruits. It does have a wide broad great aroma nose appeal. 
Uh, the palate is smooth, creamy, and sweet, and the finish is enough to, to talk about and chew on a little bit. Um, I really think it's a great scotch. So I'd give it four and a half stars out of five, for sure. I really like it. Um, having said that, this, you can see, I'm farther down in the bottle. And it's also not just been farther down in the bottle, this has been on my shelf for a year and a bit. Um, and um, what I tasted today with the water, that's just, that just happened. But some of the notes, some of the fruits and stuff, uh, really, I think, popped more, either from my memory or from my notes, than now. Uh, some whiskeys, uh, you know, get sweeter, um, lighter. Uh, this whiskey, I think, loses a little bit of its depth with time. So uh, I would say, get a bottle if you haven't had it, give it a try. And as I said, crowd pleaser, look, this one would be a nice one to put on the table, I think for an event or, or a, a gathering where you're probably gonna move through it pretty quick because um, it, for me, has not held up as well over a year and a half as some of my other bottles have for my, for my personal taste. Anyways, but great. So uh, thanks guys. Uh, if you like those thoughts on the 14 year Caribbean cask, please like the video or subscribe and or subscribe and uh, also throw a comment. I hope you guys have something poured nicely for Sunday. It's a lovely thing to do on, on uh, Scotch Sunday. Uh, so thanks. Cheers, guys.